Thoughts about Malfeasance not getting disabled yet, Cross? I don't know, man. I mean, the only thing I can think of is, I mean, when you think about it, hold on, when you think about it, Crota's in now. You don't really need major DPS weapons, you know? You just need to take down Crota's shield and then worry about Oversoul. Malfeasance is intentional confirmed. I don't think it's intentional. Matt, we're going to go over in just a second. We're going to talk about builds we're going to be using tomorrow. Overload hand cannon got disabled? No, it did not. Then why is it still on? Why do I still have it? Check TWAB. Oh, they added it in? Get the fuck out of here. Overload hand cannon mod. Oh my God. Well, that, that completely ruins our loadout. All right, chat. We need two new loadouts then. There has been lots of things being disabled. Tessellation exotic fusion rifles, one that's been disabled. We've walked been disabled and i had a build ready for that time banner of war aspect disabled which would have been amazing with the relic foe tracer also disabled uh, elemental munitions mod disabled overload hand cannon mod disabled now the overload hand cannon mod being disabled that's a big deal for my folks that were going to use malfeasance and lucky pants we've had some crazy crazy damage we won phase templar the other day and it was within like 10 seconds that we shredded templar with malfeasance with the interaction that it's having with overload hand cannon and it's not supposed to be having that interaction but nonetheless it's also disabled now i will also say this guys i think that this list will probably get bigger over the next 24 hours. It's very likely things will be added. So we'll keep checking back at the Destiny 2 team. With that being said, talk about the builds that are gonna be deadly tomorrow. And what we're recommending you are not builds that, that wouldn't be good anywhere else in the game, but these are gonna be specifically good for Crota's end and the encounters that we know. Yes, there's probably gonna be some twists here and there. It's probably gonna deviate a tad, and especially like Crota, there's probably gonna be a shakeup in some way similar to like Oryx. Regardless though, these builds are gonna be very strong, and we think they're gonna be very strong in multiple encounters throughout that raid. With that being said, Lucky Pants Malfeasance, which I had right here, that's a no-go. We're taking that off the list. So I'm gonna start with loadout number one, Boots of the Assembler and Lumina. Now I bring this one up, and this is gonna be good throughout the entire raid, honestly, but primarily in in the encounter against Crota. You have a chalice. You pick up the chalice, you pass it around so that people can heal. Now, granted, we have healing rifts and whatnot, but the reason why Boost is similar would be really good and Lumina is this is another way to extend that healing capability throughout the team without having to sit in a rift. I think this would be really, really good. It's a great way to keep your teammates alive and bypass that mechanic, which is essentially going to always keep you depleted of your health. And Lumina too, with its stacking capabilities, would also be very, very nice. By the way, I also think that Chalice and all those things, like that mechanic is definitely still going to be a thing because if it wasn't going to be a thing, then Banner of War wouldn't have been disabled. You see, Banner of War was going to be really, really good because you could have picked up the relic. You could have went in and got a, a sword kill on something. You could have procced it and self-healed without having to keep the Chalice on you. You could have just given the Chalice to your teammates and worry about Banner of War healing you the entire time. You can imagine when jumping up from platform to platform, you know, jumping up there to, to deal damage on Crota, even when you're getting hit with boomers, you would be self-healing the entire time. You see why I got to say, but I think Boots of the Similar plus Lumina would be very, very good. Second loadout, Celestial Nighthawk Hunter. There is something called the Oversoul that pops up. It's that, that big green white mechanic that pops up while doing damage to Crota. Celestial Nighthawk is really good because I'm pretty sure a single shot from Celestial would destroy the Oversoul. Can someone correct me if I'm wrong? Wasn't it a single shot from Celestial on the Oversoul that would that would get the it would one hit KO? Wouldn't Star Eaters do the same thing? You could do that if you if you have orbs ready. I'm only putting Celestial here because one and done. You don't have to worry about collecting orbs. I will say this though, if the damage is not enough, maybe Star Eaters, but keep in mind, you cannot crit, correct me if I'm wrong, you cannot crit the Oversoul. The whole purpose, especially the damage scaling for Star Eater scales, is to land those crits and stack that precision damage. You could div it. It's not a lot of time to div it, guys. Now, somebody just brought it up and said, yeah, as, as far as like another option for taking on the Oversoul, Xenophage would be good. You could use Xenophage, no damage fall off whatsoever, and, and it's immediate damage, right? Xenophage may actually be fantastic, not just for Oversoul, but also for downing Crota. It's immediate, there's no travel time like you, you have with rockets. Xeno may be fantastic here. I know that's not a loadout, but just to throw that option there, Xeno could be really, really good in that encounter. Just take Sleeper and Ikelos SMG. Sleeper's good too. But keep in mind, Sleeper is crit dependent. It still doesn't, it doesn't have damage fall off as severely as other linear fusion rifles when not landing a crit, but it is very crit dependent. Whereas 
Xenos not. Don't forget about Grand Overture. It could do Grand Overture. But you got what Grand Overture is a weird one because in its power up form, it should all land. I mean, it's a huge oversoul that pops up, guys. But my concern is like maybe those shots won't track where it needs to track. You're gonna be shooting it over Crota. My concern with 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 that is that it's gonna track all the Crota. Even when Crota is down, it's gonna track the Crota. Now the topic of and, and I know we're really veering off on the loadout thing here. Les brought up a great point. He's curious if Arbalus would do extra damage to Crota and specifically his shield. This is enough to warn a, a an exotic slot. Keep in mind, guys, Arbalus did do extra damage inside of Ghost of the Deep to that shield. Remember, you could immediately down that shield with a single shot from Arbalus. Now, that was a bug. What are the chances that same bug would also transfer here to Crota's end? This is Destiny. Loadout number three. The new Warlock exotic might be the play, especially in the first encounter. Briar Bites. Okay, so it comes with a perk, guys, called One with Void where your void souls have a longer duration. They also gain escalating damage durability as they defeat targets. You can retrieve your void souls by interacting with them, allowing them to then be redeployed. So the main takeaway for this, guys, you'll be able to literally carry it. You know the, you know the totems throughout the first encounter of Crota? You have to go to each one. You'll be able to carry that. You'll be able to drop it, carry it, send it back out to clear ads near the totem, let it defend you, pick it back up before you go. Now, someone says, why not Stacy Warlock during totems? Stacy is really good, but keep in mind, you're moving a lot. Stacy's really good for like locking down an area. We're going to talk about Stacy in just a moment. Stacy's really, really good about locking down an area. The thing with Briars is you get the weekend and heals at the same time and you can carry it throughout the entire activity. Whereas, you know, Stacy is, is good. And I, I think instead of utilizing Stacy in Osmiomancy and it's Stacy's turrets, just use Cold Snap. Like literally just use Cold Snap instead. Loadout number four, guys. Stronghold Titan. Now, I'm mentioning Stronghold Titan here because it has not disabled it. But when you hold the Relic, it should synergize with Stronghold. Meaning the healing capabilities that you get from Stronghold. And actually, I don't... We haven't put out our sword video yet. But the combination like Stronghold and Banner of War. I know Banner of War is disabled here for the raid. But that combination... You're unkillable. You're literally unkillable. I think Stronghold, if it can synergize with the Relic, means Titans are going to be rocking the Relic. Now, let me ask y'all. Do y'all feel like even if Strongholds could work with the Relic, would there be a better class to rock the Relic? Invis Hunter. That's perfect because our next loadout is actually Omni Hunter. Invis Hunter may actually be good. So we're on the topic of Relics right now. And yeah, I, I guess like instead of you actually jumping down a platform, which in, in my opinion is it's still easier because you got boomers that are gonna be doing splash damage. If you're the hunter that's going in this, you could just go in this and just chill. Just sit right there next to Crota and wait for the shield to drop. And this is if the mechanics are the same. Let's brought up a great point. They could actually change things around where you drop the shield in some way with the sword and then proceed to do damage. Everyone else would proceed to do damage. With that being said, Omni Hunter, especially through that first section, you know, we're talking about, you know, Briars and, and Osmiomancy and freezing enemies and killing enemies and slaying enemies. You can honestly bypass all of that and just go invisible. Omni can do that perfectly. You literally won't have any issues. And back inside of D1, you can invis that whole first section. Matter of fact, Slayerich, his first solo completion and the first solo completion of Crotus was going in this. So it could definitely still work here. Loadout number six, I have Stacy Locke. I think that uh, Osmiomancy is still really, really good, even without you relying on Stacy. Where Stacy is going to be great. One of the problem areas in Crotus in, especially when under level, is the boomers. The boomers will continually keep spawning up top. And if you're the, the sword bearer and you're going in, you are getting boomed to hell and back. This is where Stacy locks come in. You could put a stasis turret either up there or you could literally leave them down low on the, the, the round platform that Crota is actually sitting on. And that way, it'll keep hitting the enemies up top. The issue with leaving the stasis turrets down low, though, they may run into a situation where they look toward Crota and you don't want them to focus on Crota because once they lock in on Crota, that's it. They're locked in on Crota. That's why actually placing a stasis turret up there, literally in the spawn area, as those boomers come out, it's just going to freeze them immediately, right? But if you can imagine like two Stacy warlocks, if you're putting turrets down everywhere and you've got the right builds, you can have seven, eight Stacy turrets up going all over the place. You could have a few on the bottom level, locking everything down. You could have two up on the top area, locking everything down, and then just spread them out and just spread them out throughout the entire area. No problem. And Stacy, we're just talking about it from Protus side of things. Stacy lock would be fantastic on the second encounter as well, especially since we're probably not going to be able to cheese that area and you're going to have to hopscotch guardians across, right? Having Stacy there to lock everything down 
and help you out, especially for the first person that goes across and they have to kind of contend with the ads on their own. If they're the Stacy lock, they can literally just sit there, drop some Stacy turrets, lock everything down, not really worry about slaying out. Lucky Pants plus Malfeasance will still absolutely be meta. Patsy, I'm so glad you're here. Um, I'm gonna break the news to you right now. Overload hand cannon will be nerfed. Now, that does not mean you can't use Lucky Pants, right? And Malfeasance. You can still use Lucky Pants and Malfeasance. You just won't get the level of damage that we've gotten here recently. It's still very good damage. You won't get the, the busted damage that we were recently getting. You don't need overload hand cannon. You don't need it, but that's what made it bust. I've left this last loadout blank. This is the chat suggested loadout. Hit me chat. Your infinite wisdom bestow upon us the eighth and final loadout suggestion. I, the suggestions I'm seeing right now are Bonk Titan, Necrotic Grips and Osteo, which, which would be good. Give him my spin gun nerf, would still be very good. And Assassin's Cow Arc Hunter. That would be good too. At least for solo play, right? You can you can go invisible. You can build into that melee and whatnot. Phoenix Cradle Titan. Yeah, I'm just going to insert this, guys. And I hope you're okay with this. Because this is something that would be universally good for everyone on the team. And this always helps. Cenotaph and Aeon Gauntlets. I think that no matter what, you can't go wrong with that, guys. Just having a way to give heavy ammo to your teammates and yourself. There's going to be a number of great, great builds. And I'm not even saying like this list is the end all list. But being on top off, we've been in multiple scenarios where if we didn't have Aeon Gauntlets in that raid encounter, we would have we would have not beaten it day one. I'm telling you guys. Did you have one Titan build on there? I love Titan. I mean, the thing about Titans, I have Stronghold Titan. If Strongholds don't work, I think Lorely would be fantastic for just anything. So I'm still rocking a Titan, but this is our loadout suggestion, guys. Weapon wise, let's 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 go over weapons, guys. I think Xeno would be fantastic just because you can't crit the Oversoul. As far as I'm concerned, you can't even crit Crota. Unless they change up the mechanics, right? They could change up the mechanics. At least to my knowledge, you cannot crit. Why Xena would be good. But you know, in that same in that same respect, you know, you can't go wrong with just rockets in general. I think we have to throw in Wither. We have to throw in Wither for, for so many reasons. Wither is something that I think Crota's in is just not prepared to take on. Wither Horde for the first encounter, the second encounter, the third encounter, it would be fantastic. Guys, I'm gonna, after our DPS testing here recently for primary weapons, in my opinion, the new king for DPS weapons, if you're not rocking, you know, lucky pants and hand cannons, touches the weight, guys. Touches the weight. It got a very nice buff. That is if we, you know, you suddenly, you're in a situation where everyone, maybe we hit a DPS check and you're like, oh crap, I need, I need more damage. That's just really nice. You know, if you're running Cenotaph, there's a lot of different trace rifles. Yeah, you could use Navigator. I think, I think Div is always fantastic. I don't think we're going to be able to Div the Oversoul. That would be wild. But I'm pretty sure you could Div Crota. I mean, if that's the case, then Linears are definitely on the table. And amongst other things, right? Galley's kind of like in that same thread as like... Um, I, I put I put G-Horn in the same realm as just Rockets and Xeno. Tractor's going to be... You know, it's going to be... It just depends on the mechanical changes, right? What you could do is the Sword Bearer could, could Rock Tractor. If it's the same mechanically, you could literally grab the sword, run up, tractor, and then proceed to use your sword after that. You lose your super. So it'd be a tight, it'd be tight to get it back. That's risky. It is risky. All right. There's really nothing else. The weapon wise, guys, after this point, it really just comes down to you. Like, I will say, have a good scout rifle. I know that sounds crazy, but have a good scout with probably explosive payload. It doesn't have to have explosive payload, but it, it would definitely help. On the encounters for Crota, especially, you're far back from the enemies. You've got boomers set up. You know, you need to have something to be able to do. It's it's further than you think. You need to have enough to do damage from that far. You know, somebody just mentioned have a have a shoot to loot scout rifle as well, so you don't have to run and go pick up the ammo. That would be actually really helpful. Oh yeah, you also have kinetic trimmers. I didn't think about that. I will put lament on there if there is somehow a change mechanically. But if you try to rush him with lament to down his shield. He will shit on you. Nobody can snag multi kills like fucking Crota. When you get into that range, it's like the sh what's the what's the what's the character from Naruto? This this is Crota. He fucking sucks everywhere else, man. Now when you when you're outside of his range, he's got nothing. But you step with you step within that motherfucking zone, it's on. Crota about to fuck you up. Keep in mind though, guys, in the weapons side of things, just be flexible. There's a lot of different weapons you can use. 
it's going to change on the fly for me. You know, I, I've got forbearance in my arsenal. I got a number of different primary options, and that's going to change throughout the entire raid. To me, the loadout section of this video is the more important section, right? Especially considering that, you know, loadouts can be funky. Have some of those things preset. I would honestly suggest presetting it in, in dim just in case the loadouts do somehow get disabled. But um, the loadout side of things are, are more important because I like to stick to a class, like pick a class and then stick to that class throughout the entire raid. Slap that like button like your mama told you right. Yeah.